It's the dividing line between two worlds, which many are willing to risk their lives to cross. So the stories are always going to be the same, right? Family reunification and some sort of economic benefit, just trying to get here to get a job and send money back home. Um, in addition to that, we hear that uh, there's violence. You've got uh, gangs over there that are controlling the neighborhoods, controlling the cities. It's a mix that reached a crisis in 2014. Some 260,000 people, mostly unaccompanied children from Central America, flooded across the border through the Rio Grande Valley. Congress called for legislation. Governor Rick Perry mobilized 1,000 National Guard troops, and the Texas legislature pumped nearly a billion dollars into the state police for border security. That was more than a year and a half ago, and with everything that's happened, the question now is what, if anything, has changed? Manning the front lines is the U.S. Border Patrol's Rio Grande Valley sector and agent Omar Zamora. Our processes have changed uh, and improved. Today, a massive new processing center stands ready to hold up to a thousand people. A rare tour found it spotlessly clean and stocked with blankets and clothing. Turns out, they may need it soon enough. In the past few months, the number of unaccompanied alien minors unlawfully entering the U.S. soared to over 17,000, and the number of family units increased to 21,000. If these trends continue, it is projected there will be a 30 percent increase in the record high numbers we witnessed in 2014. They're still coming, not in the, the same numbers, but uh, I guess we can call it a mini surge. Yet like many in the valley, Hidalgo County Judge Ramon Garcia argues the military presence is scaring off business, despite one of the lowest crime rates for a large U.S. city. It just creates a bad image, a uh, negative image of our area, which uh, we don't appreciate. He argues a better solution, more legal resources to quickly sort out who can stay and who must go. They're coming in and they're not trying to evade. They're saying, here we are. So you can add a thousand more folks there. Democratic Congressman Henry Cuellar co-sponsored a bipartisan bill that would expedite cases from Central America, while that bill never passed. We also added about $750 million to help Central America uh, beef up its security, fight the drug gangs, uh, provide some economic assistance because the more people we get to stay over there, the less people come in. Another 80 million has gone to help Mexico secure its southern border with Guatemala, where along with Honduras, the U.S. government has mounted an ad campaign warning what to expect from human traffickers. From child molestation to, to raping or leaving them out in the brush to die. Republican Congressman Lamar Smith chairs the House Border Security Caucus, which toured the valley in February. Officials told Smith, as well as us, that migrants believe their odds of staying are worth the risk. That's the word that gets back. And if people figure they have a 95% chance of being allowed to stay and work and get government benefits, they're going to come no matter what they might hear on the street or on the radio. Do you believe that an impression on the population that's coming across illegally that they will be returned if they don't have a legal claim, that that actually acts as a deterrent? and? slows down the flow? Yes, I believe that, that that matters. Meanwhile, agents on the front line are battling an additional fight against perceptions they're the aggressors. Joining them for a day of hands-on training revealed an organization keenly aware of the humanity and the dangers they face. I think the biggest misconceptions are, hey, they're just children down there, right? It's a humanitarian crisis, which it was in 2014. But what I want to stress is there's the 50% of the other individuals that are running, that are fighting, that have criminal records. We're out here doing a fantastic job, 365 days out of the year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In the Rio Grande Valley, Mark Wiggins, KVU News.